good on that issue. Um, look, I, I think the my libertarian you know point of view on this is that what the government does constantly is break your legs and then offer you a crutch, like uh, <laughs> Harry Brown used to say. And a lot of times, then libertarians, which gives us a bad name, is they'll come out and rail against the crutch. And then somebody, a, a decent person looks at it and goes, but this person's leg is broke and, and they need a crutch. You know, so I understand where the people feel like they need help in these type of situations. Um, but I, what I see is the monumental failure of governments on a global level uh, from the Chinese doctor who blew the whistle on this thing and was then silenced by the Chinese government um, to the fact that the, the FDA and the CDC, well, their initial response was to say, don't use masks. By the way, you don't, those masks don't work anyway, and you're too dumb to even know how to use a mask, even though every piece of research ever done has indicated that no matter how crappy your mask is, you're better off having it than, than not having it. Right. Um, to the fact that, um, you know, uh, the, the first uh, doctors who did tests in Seattle, they were uh, told by the FDA not to. And they, they eventually just said, screw you, we're doing this. And that's how they found out the disease was here or the virus was here to begin with. And then my the other issue is it seems to me like the major uh, issue that we're having with our healthcare system right now is that there's not enough beds. There's not enough hospital beds. And there are, uh, you know, there, these uh, certificate of need, uh, you know, legislations all throughout the country, which basically say that, the you know, you have to be approved in order to build any of these medical facilities, you have to jump through a million hoops. So I, I guess I would just say that the, the government has just mismanaged this and made the situation worse in every conceivable way. Um, Stefan, um, generally speaking, what do you guys think uh, would be the appropriate response or I guess the right libertarian response to a pandemic like we're seeing now? Um, Stefan, would you like to start us off? Sure. I mean, that question, I think, is broken down into two sections. I'll just touch on one and then turn it over to the panel. The first is, how should we communicate about the pandemic as it stands? Now, I think that there's a great opportunity in the midst of all of this tragedy to remind people of the basic reality that governments have not kept people safe, that a lot of politicians are using the pandemic as an excuse to try and grab more power. A lot of the supposed moralists in the media who've been haranguing and harassing and libeling and slandering us, lo these many decades, have suddenly found an enormous blind spot when it comes, comes to holding the totalitarian communists in Beijing directly responsible for facilitating the spread of this pandemic, that people are expecting the free market to step in and solve these issues. But of course, everything is being blamed uh, on the market to a large degree and, uh, oh, it's greed for free things from China and the idea that the government is going to go and step in and take over industries as it seems to be striving to do is a really terrible idea. The World Health Organization has been revealed as not only corrupt, but as massive Vesuvius plant sprayers of disinformation and counterinformation. They're saying, oh, masks don't really work. Well, of course they do. And they, even as late as February, were saying that uh, closing borders was not necessary and was actually counterproductive. And the media that's been crying out about racism rather than a very dangerous disease that's spreading like wildfire in many ways through the population, I think it's important to hammer these points home and say to people, look, the government isn't keeping you safe. The media is lying to you. And we have to start looking at alternatives to this massive centralized infrastructure of doom as a way of solving social problems. And this isn't even to point out the basic fact that uh, either a government lab developed this and then it got out accidentally, which seems to be the most likely explanation, or it's actually a weaponized virus that was maybe put out on purpose, but the idea that it came from bat soup is kind of ridiculous. And so let's point out to people that it was centralized socialist totalitarianism, communist totalitarianism, that either directly or indirectly was responsible for the spread of this virus because China didn't close its damn airports, it didn't close its damn borders, it let this whole thing spread out into the world. And we say, well, maybe they don't want to. Well, they just did. They just closed their borders to people coming in. So we know for sure that they can. So this is an entirely government created, government spread, government facilitated disease. But of course, when people are scared, they tend to run to big daddy government as a solution. And we've got to really push back against that nonsense. 
All right, so just a point of order here. So for everyone joining in, uh, you guys are welcome to write questions in roundtable discussion, the text chat above this voice chat. Uh, just letting you know, we probably won't get to many of them. Um, we'll pr I anticipate having maybe five questions that we touch on tonight, uh, but you're welcome to write them there and I will keep an eye on them. And you can discuss uh, with all the other users in roundtable discussion as we go along here. Uh, so next, Keith, what are your thoughts on this? How should uh, libertarians address a pandemic like this? Well, it's one of those sort of trick questions that you often get. Uh, well, uh, what, if, what if there's a pandemic? In other words, should we be safe or what if there's a pandemic under libertarianism? The question should be, if there's a pandemic, would you rather live in a state of society or a libertarian society? It, it's the equivalent of saying, oh, a bad thing is happening. Therefore, the Church of Scientology has the right to violently dominate millions of strangers and take 25% of their income. And anyone who doesn't abide by arbitrary regulations has to be caged. So if I'm in the midst of a pandemic, the kind of society that I want to live in uh, is one that allows for the most amount of freedom to allow the intellectual, natural elite in the medical industry to rise to the top, free exchange of ideas, making sure there isn't an FDA who, according to the excellent work of Dr. Mary J. Ruart, has killed millions of people uh -huh. literally by forcibly stopping people from making voluntary exchanges and innovating in the healthcare market. I mean, imagine every time you have to you know, come up with some technological or intellectual uh, argument or idea, you have to get an approval from a committee. Well, of course, that's going to make you much poorer than you otherwise would be. The committee is going to be corrupt. It has no incentive to make sure good ideas get out there. It's m much more worried about letting something go through and then it receiving a bad rap afterwards. So uh, the existence of a pandemic does not refute uh, the non-aggression principle. It does not justify a group of people initiating violence against uh, millions of strangers. And speaking of the Chinese government, on February 6th, scientists from the South China University of Technology uploaded a paper on the origins of coronavirus. Where did it come from? Well, this offers some clue. At the time, the official death toll in China from the coronavirus was 564. The paper made a number of notable observations and claims that are worth knowing about, and that's why we're telling you. We want to be clear that we're not endorsing any of these conclusions. We haven't independently confirmed them. We can't. But you should keep in mind as you hear this that these findings come from Chinese scientists who work for a university that is controlled by the Chinese government. So whatever else they are, the views you're about to hear are probably not racist anti-Chinese propaganda. Here's what the paper says. First, the scientists confirm what scientists around the world have said they believe. The virus most likely came from an animal known as the intermediate horseshoe bat. Here's the striking thing. There are no known colonies of this bat within 900 kilometers of Wuhan, nor is there any evidence that they were sold in the Wuhan wet market, despite many claims in the American media to the contrary, including on this show, by the way. Last night, we did a segment on wet markets, the one in Wuhan included, and suggested that this bat was sold there. But let's be clear. The only actual analysis of that question that we're aware of is in this paper. These scientists interviewed almost 60 people, 59 of them, who frequented the Wuhan wet market. They confirmed there were no horseshoe bats for sale there, period. So that raises the question, where did the virus-carrying bats come from? And the paper says this, quote, We screened the area around the market and identified two laboratories conducting research on bat coronavirus. Within a few hundred yards of the wet market was something called the Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention. According to public reports, the center used intermediate horseshoe bats for research. Then about seven miles away was another facility. This one was called the Wuhan Institute of Vi Virology. The Virology Institute also conducted research on intermediate horseshoe bats, the ones that were not sold at the wet market. South China University scientists concluded that the coronavirus pandemic, the one that people are dying from here, likely came from one of these two government labs in Wuhan. They noticed that a scientist at the Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention had been exposed to the blood and urine of horseshoe bats. They also suggested that infected tissue samples from research animals may have wound up in the Wuhan wet market. And they ended the paper this way, quote, the killer coronavirus probably originated from a laboratory in Wuhan. Safety levels may need to be reinforced in high-risk biohazardous laboratories. 
regulations may be taken to relocate these laboratories far away from city centers and other densely populated places, end quote. How's that for interesting? Now, this paper has been online for nearly two months, and so far it has been virtually ignored in this country. Almost nobody in American journalism has dared to write about it. The few who have were immediately attacked as dangerous conspiracy theorists. Instead of assessing what seemed like the rational conclusions presented in the Chinese paper, there was a spate of American news stories and academic research designed to show that the coronavirus absolutely could not have been engineered in a Chinese lab. They sounded supremely confident of that. But do they really know it? And the answer is no, they don't. As a factual matter, it is impossible for Western scientists to settle the question either way. So instead of doing that or admitting that, they amped up the rhetoric, hoping that you wouldn't notice the difference. A post on the National Institutes of Health website, written by NIH Director Francis Collins himself, dismisses any such speculation as, quote, outrageous. Keep in mind, NIH is supposed to be keeping you safe from diseases like this one, not running political interference for hostile foreign governments. This is how they're spending their time as Americans die in the middle of a global pandemic. And still, no one addressed the substance of the claims. The South China University paper concludes that the virus probably escaped accidentally from a lab in Wuhan. It said not one word about bioweapons. Yet the NIH and USA Today and countless other outlets have devoted thousands of words to scolding you for thinking the virus may have been a form of biological warfare. Notice that's a totally different claim than the one made in the paper. And that's not accidental. One of the surest signs that people are lying to you is when they answer questions you didn't ask. And that's exactly what the professional class is doing with this story. And they're doing it on many fronts. They're lying to you. They're claiming to know things they don't know. They're dismissing the obvious as impossible. They're blaming you for their failures. And the media are helping them do it. The stakes are too high to let them continue this way. So no matter what, stay skeptical as you assess the world. Remain rational. Gather your own evidence and come to your own conclusions. You shouldn't have to do that. You ought to be able to trust the people in charge. But you can't. So at this point,